Hey all, Board Game Rants where you'll find everything solo, tabletop, gaming, and more. Here's Nations. I'm gonna play this solo. This is an older game. This is no tutorial, this is no strategy guide, and all I'm interested in here is giving you guys a view of what this plays like. And we're gonna have some fun. Let's get after it. All right, so what we have here is any fans of Through the Ages, Vladis Fatel, my favorite designer of all time. This game, Nations, will it runs parallel to that on the very light side of that. It looks pretty complicated. Oh my gosh, it plays so quickly. This is not a fiddly game, as fiddly as it may look. It's, it's just so succinct in the way it plays. It's a type of solo variant that I don't usually like going to be run by these little event tiles but just the way it's done is so appealing to me that and, it, and it's done in such a way that does not get in the way of me just having fun playing the game seeing how high I can score this is just to beat your own high score but it gives you a nice range of scores to sort of compare yourself to each game there's tons of different level T adjustments you can take cards out or or put them back in to adjust the, the difficulty. There are, well, I'll get over here. There's, there's difficulty letting, level setting here from Chieftain down to, or Chieftain down to Emperor. I'm playing on Prince level. There's a whole bunch. This is, this is my player board, if you will. This is my nation. I'm playing the Vikings. And, but on the other side of this, I think is Japan. And then there's like, there's, I don't know, 10, tw there's 20 nations. I have the expansion. There's whole, there's a whole bunch of nations that come with their own pre-printed starting. They're all asymmetrical. They start you off with different resources. So, I mean, just an immense amount of replayability here. And then these cards that are going to come out that, that I can purchase, you know, I can purchase this row for one coin or anything from this row for two. And then at the end of each round, they're going to shift down. The most expensive is going to become the most cheapest or at least whatever's left. And these two rows are going to get wiped off the board. And we're going to cycle through these ages. There's four different ages. And in each age, we get to play two rounds. So there's basically eight rounds to the game and then it's over and it goes fast. And but you can see, I mean, look at this stack. This is this is the age one. I'm, I'm starting in age one, the the antiquity age. And then here's this stack of two, you know, and you're only going to go through a, a, a third, maybe each each game. So the variability is insane. Now, again, this is uh, I have the, the the expansion, the turmoil expansion. I forget what it's called. What is it called? Uh, dynasties. So there's some extra stuff here. But anyway, let's get to playing it because you know, just seeing it in action is something else. Because you'd look at this and you might think this is this is crazy. But once you realize, if you've ever played through the ages, this this will be you get this in a in a in a blink. But if you've not even played ever a civilization building game, this one is a magnificent one to start with, just because it's so wonderfully done. Let's get into some play. So the game comes with these awesome, these tiles, these uh, rule round summary things here, a little scoring summary at the end. And essentially you're gonna score your victory points. You start, I start off with three. If ever you go to negative zero, you lose the game. Uh, but at the end of the game, you're gonna count up all your victory points and some other things, and that'll, that'll, that's how much your, uh, your score will be. And you're not really playing against an AI. This is just gonna kind of impede you and I'll show you how that works in a second, but here, you know, this all the all the writing in black is my own. So round summary, solo. It doesn't. This is not a solo card. I wrote all this extra stuff, you know, end turmoil or if second AI rules stuff. So I added. So this is my own. You know, I marked this sucker up to help me remember what I need to do. Steps are very simple. You just go top to bottom. So round marker, move to the next round. While I'm on, I'm in the first round. Progress cards. Those are these these cards out here. I've already filled those up, but uh, in the solo, you only put four cards per row. Done that. And this is growth. So growth, each time I can either take a worker off of here, which would then go into my available workers. I start off with a five. Or I can take resources according to my level here at Prince. I could take three of any type of resource, be it stone, coin, or food. Well, 
and it's an either or thing and you only can do it once so i could either take a work if i took a worker this immediately reduces my stability by three that's that's bad if i take this worker eventually i'm gonna have to pay three food so all right i've already got five workers to work with i've not even put them out you know anywhere yet so i'm just gonna take food you know, these vikings didn't start off with a lot of food two food um they, they start off with some good amount of, of gold and, and kind of everything else uh, but not food. So I'm just going to take three food for my growth phase. Because you always got to feed your, your workers there at uh, resolution phase coming down down below. So that was my growth. I either take a worker or three of any of those based on the level I'm playing. Took three of those. New events. Draw one event card. So normally there's like an event card when you're playing multiplayer, but you just use these tiles when you're playing solo. So I... I, I there's one through four to represent the different ages. I shuffle them up, I flip it over, and it's going to tell me what the parameters of the, the solo AI are. It's going to have a military strength of two. So it's represented by yellow. I'm going to move that up to two. It's going to have a stability of three, it's telling me. So over here, putting this stability up to three. Uh, there's going to be three architects available. Architects help you build your wonders. So I'm going to put three over there. If those are gone, then that's that's all the building of of uh, wonders that I can do. And with the variant that uh, for the dynasty variant, that means I'm going to also have three terminal cards available, which I'm going to take three of these and I'll just kind of put them up there just to remind me I can take three turmoil actions if I wanted to. And that always matches the number of architects each round. He's going to get one book, so that represents knowledge. He starts with two, now he's up to three. I want to be ahead of him in books. And then at the uh, resolution phase, there's going to be a, a famine of two, so I'm going to have to spend two food. And if I can't, it's bad. He's going to roll a die. The AI is going to roll a die each turn. And on a one to four, it's going to do something real easy. On a five, it varies depending on the tile you drew. In this case, it's going to remove two architects on a roll of five. Is going to get plus two books on a roll of six. So that's when it's its turn. It's only going to take its turn if I do certain things. Um, so right now, I and I and I put that on here. So we, we're we're finished. Architects or uh, sorry, new events did that. Got the architects out. Got the turmoil cards out. I adjusted all the solo stuff. It's time to play the game. So action phase. So I can buy a card out here. Pay the coins. I can deploy my guys out on my available cards here. These are pre-printed, but I could buy other stuff to upgrade this, this stuff. Uh, I could hire an architect. I need to have a wonder first. So if I, if I purchase this great library, then, and if I had fingernails, then um, I can use an architect to build this great library, and then it gives me its bonus. I can take a terminal card, which if I took a, turmoil card my nation would be in turmoil for this round you know it'd lose two stability but it would give me the ability to change my special action here which is unique to the vikings it doesn't do me a lot of good in a in a solo you know others would lose one resource well there's no others i'm playing solo so i'm gonna want to throw my nation in turmoil so that i can shift and put it one of these different special actions here this is this is part of the uh, dynasties expansion so this is this is this is an expansion stuff so yeah so that's that's an option um i can explore that has to do with wonders but uh but that's about it so i usually buy a card or you're putting guys on your cards for the most part and so what do i want to do out here well i am looking to you know i'm i'm, I'm playing the freaking vikings we're animals i can't oh, berserkers i should say so I could get them farming. I could put them as berserkers in my military strength. Uh, I can get them mining stone and gold. Um, I could start, you know, put them in this, this church, which would increase my stability and increase my knowledge. To place a worker out there would cost me one stone. I've started with five stone, so I've got enough money, enough stone. Everything, whenever you put workers out on a card, it, it basically costs you stone. Whenever you buy cards from... Out here, it costs you gold, and then you put them, you cover up here. So let's see here. What do we got? I may want to, uh, this farm doesn't produce a lot of, of gold, and I have two, I'm sorry, a lot of food, and I've got two opportunities to get stone here. So I think, first and foremost, so cheap, I can buy this aqueduct for one coin. 
So I'm going to spend that and I'm going to put two as change. I'm going to purchase this aqueduct and I'm going to put it right over this farm. And now when I put workers on this, it's going to it's going to get me a couple food and increase my stability by one each worker that I put out there. So that's good. Now anytime I buy a card off the board, the AI gets to go. So we're going to roll. He rolls a two. So now we look. Column one, two, three, four. That easy. So column two is going to remove all these cards. These all go bye-bye. And that represents the AI's turn. So if you want cards out there, you better snatch them up quick. So he's, he's taking that. Now... Let's see, or anything else that I find super interesting and unavoidable to grab here. Well, I tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend, now I'm going to place workers. So this is basically, I'm going to deploy uh, these workers. And to do that, I just basically take from my supply, not this one, that's not part of my supply yet, here. And I have to spend the amount of stone, one, grab the stone, spend it. And it's going to increase my production of food by two uh, during the resolution phase. It instantly increases my stability up by one. So I'll put that up there. And then at the end of the game, for every worker I have on here, it's going to be worth one victory point, up to two workers. So let's see here. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to spend another stone. And that's going to increase my stability. Again, anything with... a uh, with a square around it, it instantly increases it. Anything with a circle around it, you get the uh, resolution phase during the production phase. That's when you have to deal with it. So for each berserker, I'm going to have to eat two food. So basically these would counter each other. But um, what else do I want to do? So I wanted to do that because ultimately I wanted to bring my stability up to two. And then what I'm going to do is throw myself into turmoil. I'm going to take this turmoil card and... Uh, so I can either play a dynasty or take two gold. Well, first of all, I have to instantly, for just this round, I have to instantly adjust my stability down two. So now I'm down to two. You just don't want to be down here in the revolt area. And it doesn't matter. It's more of something you'd have to deal with at the end, at the resolution phase. But I just wanted to, I wanted these guys here anyway. So, and this only lasts for one round that I'm in turmoil. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a dynasty. That's what these cards are. So I'm going to play my Normans here. If I can, oh my gosh, if I can get them. And I am going to cover up this special action. And now I'm going to get a raid value of plus three. So raid value has to do with having some military. So now I'm going to spend one. I'm going to place a guy there. It's going to cost me one stone so i'm getting two back and change there we go and now i instantly increase my military by three according to that now at the end i'm gonna have to at the end of this round i'm gonna have to pay two food but these guys are these are making some food remember again too for my growth action i took three food so i've got i've got some good amount of food here i'm gonna be able to i'm gonna be able to do it no problem and now though i've got these berserkers the berserkers doesn't matter how many you have on here, but I now have a raid value of three. And because of these, this Normans, my dynasty card, I have an extra three. So I have a raid value of six right now. What does that mean? It means that if I battle, I'm going to get six good. So if I go after this battle of Kadesh, it costs me two coins. I'm going to spend two coins. Boom. Now I get to buy. Oh, before I do that, I almost forgot. Anytime you... So putting my coins back. Anytime you place a guy on a military, increases your military, the AI gets to roll. So not, not on these peaceful little buildings, but whenever I put military, the AI rolls. Whoa. And I got lucky. Just rolled a two again. There's nothing to be removed. AI's turn is done. Now, I can do what I was going to do. I'm going to spend two coin to buy this Battle of Kadesh. And what it says is basically I can get a number of books food or stone equal to my raid value well my raid value is now three plus three six so if that's two coins i can get six of these resources i can't split it up it's going to be six of one of those so i'll discard this and i'm gonna take well i'm still okay on stone i only got two guys uh, i'm gonna, not gonna really be producing a lot of stone so I think right now I'm just going to go for books. I'm going to get six books. I'm going to increase my knowledge because it's important to have 
more books at the end of a an age, the age of antiquity, you get three victory points as long as you're ahead of the AI. So I'm going to just do that for now. That was my battle. Now, again, I purchased a card from out here, so the AI gets to go. Roll to five. What does a five mean? Five means it's going to remove two architects. So two architects, only one left to possibly build a wonder this round. But I haven't even, I'm not even going that route, at least not yet. Now, maybe I will. So we've gone. I could get this great library. What would it do? It'd give me plus two books each round. Golden Age bonus. So if I bought a Golden Age card, which I don't see one. This was a Golden Age card here. But if Golden Age bonus one, I'd get an extra, I'd get an extra resource if I bought a Golden Age. Um, lost if least stability. Ooh, I lose this great liability if ever I'm behind in stability. Well, right now I'm behind in stability. So I <laughs> don't, don't want to go after the great library here at this point. So, ooh, but um, uh, Macedonia or Macedonia or Macedonia, or however you say that. This is a colony. I could purchase this if my military is at least four or equal to four. Hi higher than four or equal. And I'm at three. Darn it, not quite there. I could spend another stone, put this out there, but now that I'd be using four food, I'd be at six, and then, so, hmm, do I want to do that? It increases my military permanently by two, and I have two colony spaces here. It's not a bad idea, but, and it's going to go away if I don't purchase it, so, but the other thing I'm looking at here is this mine. I want to be able to get more of that. Now, I have a quarry. This would be a little bit of an upgrade to stone per worker, Maybe I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to buy that mine. It's going to cost me two. So I'm, I'm down to one coin buying this mine. I'm going to cover up my quarry. But whenever you buy a card, it rolls. Rolls a two again. Nothing there. Now I'm going to spend a stone. I'm going to get my first miner out there. It's going to help me during my production phase. Hmm. And then also two. Do I want to do this church or do I just want to go for the mine right now? Nah, I'm not going to worry about stability yet Ooh, action one per round <gasps> Ooh, wait a second old upsell this is this is a pre-printed on here it's going to cost it's going to cost me two victory points at the end of the game if i keep it so i don't really want to keep this i'll be able to cover it up if i build a new wonder but once per round i can spend a food if i do that i get plus three this round so what i can do is as an action and what i do i keep track of that with these little markers i take this action i'm going to Spend a food. I have now three this round, so I'm gonna have to remember to take remove that. But now I'm up to six. Remember that? Remember that there colony I was just talking about trying to get? Now I'm going to spend my last coin and purchase this colony because this round I am above four. And you don't lose this if you go under that military strength later in the game. You it's permanent. You keep it until you replace it. So boom. I spent my one coin. I've conquered uh macedonia i'm going to get plus two permanent and instantly military and that's going to stay and you can always kind of look out and see where you're you're at at any given point you know i can see okay they got one guy here that's three military this is two so i'm at five this is once per round so i'm at eight am i there yep i'm at eight so you can always kind of look to see if you're in the right spot or not so i've done I'm done but i did purchase a card to get there from the board yeah, I rolled around. Gets another two. I don't know what's the twos, but that's great. So that is that is. Oh, I think I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna put this guy out. I think I'm gonna spend the one last iron that I have here, and we're gonna go for it. We're gonna get this mine, and uh, we're done. So now what happens is uh, we come over here and we're gonna look production. So I produce money, then food, then stone, then books. So we look over here money well i've got two guys on the mine so that's going to get me two money no other money producing things so i'm going to grab my two money boop put them right there food so it's going to kind of be a plus and minus thing so we look across here who produces food this guy eats two food but these guys combined produce four food anybody else no so produced four subtracting two i'm going to get two food this Production phase. There's my two food. Stone. All right, going across again. I've got two miners, and that each produce two stone each. So I'm going to get four stone. There's that. Lastly, 
books. Anybody? No, I didn't have anybody at the church. So no studying happened. No knowledge occurred. My knowledge stays uh, stays right there. And that is it for production. Now player order. Whoever is highest on the military track at this time, stay. You know, goes first. I am. So I'm going to keep my. You start the game going first, but this could swap back and forth, and it usually will, um, depending on what the AI's military strength is that round. But I, I keep, we maintain player order. War, if somebody had bought this card, then there would be a, a war, which is super easy to take care of. You know, at the end of the, at the, end of the round, if you, uh, if you don't have military strength, according to whoever bought this war, the war's strength, like if I bought this war, this little military, that would go there. And at the end, the AI would lose that war because it's less than that military strength when I bought that war. But nothing bad happens to the AI where war is concerned. So war is very straightforward. So one thing in this in this variant I wish there was a little more to, um, but ultimately you just got to make sure you don't lose wars <laughs> in the game because the AI doesn't affect them either at all. So uh, so war didn't even happen. Nobody bought a war. And then uh, and I get I get plus one victory points if more stability. Otherwise, minus one victory point. So unfortunately, this round, he's got more stability than me. So I'm going to lose a victory point, which isn't good. So three, but I get two back. But, you know, there was a reason for that. I threw my nation in turmoil here. Um, then and I did that so that I could get this higher raid value, which got me a lot more books. So anyway, moving on. Famine. So that's where I have to look at this tile. It says famine. My, my people are suffering two famine, so I have to spend two food. No problem at all. If I couldn't pay that, there's penalties. You're going to lose victory points. You're going to lose resources. Bad news bears if you can't pay your, your costs. Uh, score if end of age, plus three victory points if I have more books. Well, this isn't the end of age. This is this is the end of round A. There's two, two rounds, and then I'd... I'd uh, potentially score. If I stay ahead on books, I'm going to be able to get three victory points at the end of the age. Now, lastly, discard turmoil card. So I'm going to discard this. Again, this was affecting my stability by minus two. Now, when I discard this, my nation's no longer in turmoil, and I have turmoil of two. I can double check that. Or, I'm sorry, I have stability of two. Again, you can check that anytime because it's always something you instantly adjust for. I have one, two guys on this aqueduct, and which multiplies the stability by two. So that's why my stability is two. I'm, I'm correctly adjusted. And that is it. That's it for the round. Then I'd go up. I would move this marker here. These actually all get, you know, this these uh, bottom two rows get discarded. You slide everything to the left and down. That's in that highest row. And then I would fill out another group of cards and I do that over and over and over again. You can imagine as you get into age two and three and four, the cards get bigger and stronger. You're producing more stuff. You're gonna build wonders. You're gonna have colonies. You're gonna get advisors like this guy. You know, this, these leaders give you extra little bonus points, uh, actions, just tremendous variance across the board. You never know what's gonna come out. You never know, like, like next round, what's gonna happen is, oh, the AI is gonna have seven military strengths two stability. Uh, there's going to be four architects to build wonders. Ooh, his books is only going to go up by one. That's going to be awesome. That means I'm going to be able to get some, some extra victory points because I'm going to beat him for this age on, on knowledge. It's going to be a famine of three, etc., etc. So that's all that changes each round. You just flip over a new one based on the age that you're at. At the end, you take a step back. You're going to get points for uh, for having resources, you'll be able to trade in those resources for victory points. Um, depending on where you're at on the military track and where you're on the stability track, that's going to increase your, your victory points. You're going to be taking into account guys that you have on buildings. You know, right here, this scores me two victory points because I have two guys on here. And the first guy scores me one victory point. This one scores me one. This guy scores me one. You know, court cards out there, you, you're going to be able to buy. You're going to you know, get two victory points per worker and stuff like that. So you'll be measuring all that, putting guys out there and um, scoring victory points on that. Sometimes the colonies have a victory point value. This doesn't. You'll have to score your minus victory points. Remember, I got to keep in mind, I need to cover up old Uppsala here before the before the end of the game so I don't 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 lose two victory points there. And um, yeah, and then at the end, after you've scored everything there, 
you get to take a look at the back of this book, this very wonderfully um, constructed rule book. This is it, by the way, one player variant right there. That's it, it's just this page. It's that easy and it all revolves around these. And then you can kind of you know find out based on your score, 10 points all the way up to 70, where you rank out in the solo hall of fame. This is a heck of a game. This is a light civilization uh, at some of its finest mechanics. How quickly it plays, how easy it is to, you know, it doesn't even take up a lot of table space. And the massive amount of play, you can play a game of this easily in an hour, easily. I've done it in way less. Because again, that was just one round and I was talking the whole time. But once you, you, you're you just you're just moving, rolling, moving, rolling, adjusting, boom, done with the round. You do a few things to reset. Next round, next round, next round, next round. Ah, oh, it's just, it's just fantastic. I don't even know exactly why I love this game so much because it is not at all the type of solo variant. I prefer a much more complex and usually a, an AI opponent. But for just, for what this does for its game, it's perfection. And I love it. So that's it. So again, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, I'm Board Game Rants. And I'm out.